can just wait for the notification. Okay. All right, so we are recording. Um, and hello everyone who is here live and also um, watching the video recording afterwards. Um, thank you for joining us for our Affordable Learning Georgia featured speaker series. Um, this month, month we are hearing from Lisa Connell and Claire Ezekiel at the University of West Georgia on their um, ancillary materials for Francais Interactif. Um, and they, this is a set of homework that they've created to go with the open textbook. Um, we're really excited to hear from them. So please go ahead. Okay. Um, yes, hello. And uh, thank you, Ms. Reardon, for that introduction. And um, to everybody who's watching um, either live or on the video for your interest in our project. Um, we're delighted to have this opportunity to present our project and are grateful for the invitation to take part in this series. Um, so my name is Lisa Connell and I'm a professor at French at the University of West Georgia where I've been teaching since 2010. I teach at all levels of the curriculum um, from 1001, our first um, semester, first year French, all the way up to senior capstone research projects. Hi, and I am Claire Ezekiel, um, an instructor of French at the University of West Georgia. I have been teaching there uh, since my fourth year now, and I teach mainly lower levels 1001 through uh, 2001, but I also teach 3000 levels um, as well. And so, like Lisa said, we are absolutely delighted to be here today. Thank you so much for coming. Um, Today, we are going to talk to you about our ancillary materials created for an existing OER, Francais Interactif. And through this ALG grant, we created our, our site, Francais Interactif de Voix, which we named after the OER. So today in this presentation, we're going to refer to the OER, Francais Interactif, that website, as well as our website, Francais Interactif de Voix. So we'll try not to get the, the two or make it too confusing for you. Um, so today we will first provide a summary of our project, including initial goals why we wanted to create these materials and impact to students as well as our courses. We will then walk you through the outline of how we completed the project, so the process, the timeline, student reception, along with what we learned along the way. Next, we're going to explore the challenges and learning curves from which we learned so much in this process. And finally, we will close with the aspects of which we're most proud and a reflection on the final project. So before we introduce you to our project summary, um, I'd like to set the context of our project. And so we will look at first year students at the University of West Georgia because our lower level French courses uh, do have a high percentage of first year students. So as you can see, um, first year students at the University of West Georgia, 56% are first generation students and 36% are Pell Grant recipients. And the vast majority of our students do work while they attend school. So we find that our students have very busy schedules. Um, for our French classes specifically, we have a lower, um, excuse me, we have a large percentage of these first year students in our French uh, lower levels. And we also have a high DFWI rate at the 1001 and 1002 level, something that we are constantly trying to address and kind of improve on. Um, and lastly, we have a low crossover rate uh, between 1001 and 1002 in our French levels. Um, and so now that we have this context, I'm going to turn it back over to my colleague, Lisa, um, to talk specifically to you about the project. Okay. Uh, yeah, thanks so much uh, for that, Claire. And for this part of the discussion, I'll be talking about the, webs the website Francais Interactive Devoir in broad strokes. Um, first, discussing what it provides why we used Google Suite to build it, and our initial goals before Claire walks us through some of the activities that students do for homework. Um, the resource to which we are providing ancillary materials is Francais Interactif, which is a French language open educational resource developed at the University of Texas at Austin in the Department of French and Italian. This is a great textbook that offers wonderful in-class activities and is complemented by a website, which um, you can see here um, on the PowerPoint slide, that thoroughly presents grammar, vocabulary, and phonetics. 
we certainly could not have completed this project without the excellent framework and foundation Francais Interactive provides. Um, however, we felt that students would benefit from additional homework activities and practice, which is why we built a homework website with the help of the Affordable Learning um, Georgia mini grant. Um, as instructors of French, we want our students to have interactive and purposeful language practice outside of classroom instruction that develops a range of language skills, but that doesn't break the bank. With the increasing costs of books and online homework platforms, we really needed something that would encourage students to get the outside of class exposure and practice that's necessary for a more successful and fulfilling experience in the classroom. So each activity um, for our homework website can function as at-home practice for students as they progress through the 14 chapters, which for us is three levels of French, 1001, 1002, and 2001. The homework combines grammar, phonetic, and vocabulary activities that build upon each other as students move through the different chapter sections. After completion, the homework, the activities are instantaneously graded to keep our students informed about not only their homework grade for that section, but also their understanding of the different concepts. An additional feature of the homework is that these activities are scaffolded. As students progress in their homework, the activities increase in difficulty. By designing our assignments this way, students gain confidence in their advancement of their language skills and can see the connections between the different components they have mastered. So in this sense, scaffolding helps keep transparent the fundamentals they have learned and need to apply to other aspects of the language and reinforces the progressive nature of language learning. Um, and finally, all activities are organized by chapter specific topics such as food, travel, media that are based on Francais Interactif. Huh? And to elaborate on these themes, we closely connect all our activities in our website, in the homework website, to the Francais Interactif website and workbook so that students are working within a consistent thematic framework that reinforces the other materials and activities we do in class. Um, and as we were thinking through the design and implementation of our ancillary materials, we weighed a variety of options, but decided fairly on to build our site using Google Suite. Um, this Google Suite was the best option for us for several reasons. First, we're a Google campus, so that means that all our students have free accounts and access to the different Google Suite apps. Also, there were logistical components for us as writers of the website. Linking the Google Forms to the website proved to be fairly simple once we got familiar with the process. There's also the question of user friendliness for students. Most students are accustomed to using Google Drive and Slides, filling out Google Forms. So this wasn't a huge leap in formatting or navigation for them. And they can also complete their homework on any device um, from laptops or cell phones. A fourth advantage of Google for us is that it helps meet the needs of students with enormous strains on their time because of working part or full-time jobs. Um, and they can complete, as I said, their homework anywhere from any device on a laptop or a phone. And with the COVID-19 pandemic, this flexibility has proven to be even more important because students without access to a laptop at home can still complete their assignments. And anecdotally, a lot of students came forward and said, I did my homework on my phone, found a hotspot. So this was something we weren't aware of as we were building it, but became very, very important um, once spring 2020 hit. Um, finally, the platform is very versatile. We can easily make revisions to the website and update the forms as needed. Because we can link the, homes, the website to the homework Google Forms within the Google Suite applications, revisions and edits can easily be made in the form and our website is automatically updated. So simply put, this means that we can edit the forms without also having to edit the website. It's sort of one-stop shopping, which is great. Um, we began this project hoping to meet many goals. Um, First and foremost, of course, we wanted to provide free resources that mirrored expensive language platforms and the content and practice they delivered, but at a much more affordable or free price for students. Um, the textbook we were using before was a wonderful resource, but prohibitively expensive. 
Adopting an OER and creating this homework website has amounted to substantial savings for students. At the time of implementation, projected savings for students enrolling only in 1001 was $103 per student. And students enrolling in multiple semesters were um, that projected saving was $210 per student. We also wanted to build in opportunities for students to review and test their understanding of grammatical principles before they moved on to new content. We found that students often tried to complete homework before studying the material that explained it, which led to discouragement at best or poor class performance at worst. To mitigate this tendency to sidestep explanatory information on the OER Francais Interactif website, we wanted to create activities that would incentivize students to engage with broader concepts of the language. And so we developed these linguistic rest stops um, um, wherein students could demonstrate explicitly how different units of language come together, not only in the target language, but in their own languages as well. Um, and increasing the percentage of students completing their homework was another primary goal of this project. And later on in the presentation, we're going to be presenting some very encouraging data about homework completion rates um, upon implementing this project. So prior to implementing this homework website, many students simply didn't do the homework because the homework platform was so cost prohibitive. Students were therefore doubly punished not only because they failed their homework grade for the class, but also because they missed out on the progressive development of their language skills through structured homework activities. As a final goal, this ALG grant was also an exciting professional development opportunity for us. At the forefront of this project was undoubtedly providing affordable learning materials to students, but we also saw this as a chance to work on developing our French core course offerings our grant writing skills, as well as a variety of technical skills. Yes, thank you, Lisa. And so with this, um, I'm going to walk you guys through the process and the timeline of our project. So our process began with extensive research on the logistics of finding a platform and delivery system in which we could create our own interactive site. And so we met with our local experts on campus for the ALG textbook transformation grants, um, people at the library that could help us focus on copyrights and open materials, along with the distance learning team. And we settled on using the Google Suite applications um, because, like Lisa said, just the accessibility for all students and instructors inside and outside of USG. So to be able to create something to this extent within the Google Apps, um, it did require a lot of individual training. And so you can find my name all over the Google forums and help pages online um, as we kind of navigated this process. And so this initial stage began in fall 2018. Our first benchmark was to have full implementation in French 1001 by spring 2019. And so this uh, elementary French 1 level consists of a preliminary chapter plus four more chapters. Um, during this first semester, we were really constantly troubleshooting and revising to make for a smoother student experience. Um, and so with full implementation of this first stage, we really were truly discovering the limitations of the forms, um, and that required a certain level of creativity and problem solving uh, itself. Our second target was completion of the following level, French 1002, by April 30th, 2019. And this would allow for a fall 2019 implementation. So December 13, 2019 was the date to finish, create, and build all of the remaining chapters, making spring 2020 the final semester of our project with full implementation into French 1001, 1002, as well as 2001. And so while we set specific points of reference for edits and revisions along the way, this process really expanded beyond these expected dates and into weekly work. And so as we saw student needs arise or as Google updated, we adjusted accordingly to ensure that we were creating the best content possible. And so per our proposal, um, both team members worked to write the content that would make each homework activity. Um, in the creation of the site, I researched the online delivery system in which we could build these activities. And uh, I also took on the role of lead contributor in the transformation of the written content into the online activities. Um, I also built the website for these online activities to be housed in. 
But to keep the work uh, distribution equal between members, Lisa wrote additional um, chapters of homework. And so now that we have um, summarized our project for you, we'd like to walk you through what a little bit of our homework looks like. So in this slide, we will take a quick look at some of the online activities from our website. Um, activities are organized into chapter and lesson assignments, each consisting of four to eight activities per assignment. And so at the beginning of each assignment, there's an exercise titled Test Me. And this activity is worth no points, but rather its function is to remind students that since this is a computer graded system, details like capitalization, punctuation, spelling, accents, all of these things need to be used correctly and precisely. So this also gives students in the habit of thinking about correct punctuation, capitalization, things like that, which we think is important to kind of emphasize, especially in a language class. So one limitation of the Google form is this kind of variation in the small things that do negatively affect the automatic grading. But by requiring students to complete this first activity before beginning the graded homework, they are reminded of this. And so as you can see in these examples, um, we were able to provide a variety of formats and activities. And so it has taken some creative brainstorming, but once um, when, but we have really been able to provide students with scaffolded practice that includes multiple choice, fill in the blank, individualized written responses, matching, checking multiple answers, um, among other things. And so our activity formats are very purposefully providing an array of mechanical and productive work on multiple language skills. So we utilize the variety of formats along with the variety of forms of student responses to test specific skills. So for example, we test recall and understanding of foundational concepts of grammatical structures with things like multiple choice questions that are in English. This would be the first level of a scaffolded set of activities that we would um, end with the student using grammatical structures and some sort of communicative expression or expansion. And we also use the variety of formats to make possible certain types of practice like listening comprehension with recordings um, and videos, as well as phonetic practice. And like I said earlier, there are limitations within Google Forms and that application that do limit the extent to which we can provide, for example, phonetic practice. Um, but we have learned to work around these limitations to incorporate focused practice based on the OER um, and with, with which students really can interact. And so this leads me to my next slide, which is on other limitations, challenges, and overall learning curves from this project. So let's see. Can we go to the next slide with the learning curves? Um, it is there. Is it not showing up? There we go. It is now. Thank you. Yes. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you. So mm -hmm. let's see. For um, these challenges and learning curves, as I mentioned earlier, edits were really not final once the assignments were built and posted. So we use that daily student feedback in class to help us revise and alter activities throughout the process. And so along the road, we were faced with challenges and we did have a few learning curves. So um, these humbling moments of rebuilding something for the 15th time are really what allowed us to create the successful site. So the first challenge uh, was just the scale of this massive undertaking. And so we wrote about 550 individual activities that span 14 chapters. And so with such a large amount of original work, it was really quite a challenge to keep the material fresh throughout the semesters of writing. So this turned out to be more of a creative project than either of us um, had previously expected, but also very rewarding. Um, we also tried to stay very centered and focused on writing content specific activities that followed a specific pacing and scaffolding, while also leading students through as much exposure to different language skills like writing, listening, speaking as possible. And so we also face challenges in design and structure. Um, each chapter in the OER has a specific theme and topic on which all vocabulary and grammar is based. So not only did we want to follow the book content, but we also wanted to create a sense of cohesion among the chapters. For example, in the summer after our pilot semester, we realized that the homework really would benefit from explicit phonetic practice. So then we had to write, edit, and build new activities for each chapter to give students this additional reinforcement. Lisa and I also had to be very careful since we were dividing chapters to write. And so not only did we have to be aware that we um, write things cohesively, 
but we also had to keep a close eye on repetitions in our sections, all the while maintaining objectivity about the project as a whole. So one of the largest challenges with design was keeping the user friendliness of the Google Apps um, while also incorporating what we felt our students really needed the most. And so we focused on specific question formats and creating those check-in points in each chapter with links to urge students to go back to the textbook, that original OER, and do extra review or studying of specific grammar um, concepts. We also um, wanted the site to get our students actively engaging with the material in their learning, not just flying through activities for a homework grade. And so our next um, set of challenges was based on time frame um, and the timeline of the project. So although we had done tests of our own, our pilot semester, we really were truly testing our homework site in real time with our students. So time management of piloting, piloting a level um, while revising and editing along with writing and building activities for the following levels, it had proved to be a challenge. And although we incorporated those big benchmarks for major revisions, um, this has proved to be a very hands-on project that we worked on and worked with um, throughout the entire time, but also that we learned a lot from throughout the entire process. And so lastly, um, perhaps our biggest learning curve was getting familiar with the technology. So we had an average amount of experience with popular Google Apps, but like we said earlier, using these applications in this linked structure and to the extent that we needed to implement them into the project, it did require training along with extensive trial and error. Um, we also incorporated the site into our learning management system, which required a little bit of new technology there. And I really can't emphasize um, enough how much we learned in these frequent revisions and edits. It really was in this process that we learned how to navigate the constraints of Google Forms. Thanks so much, Claire, for uh, that overview and also the very uh, the presentation of all that um, went into this project. Um, so for this slide, uh, I'd like to just walk through some of the accomplishments, some of what we feel um, the most proud of um, in completing this project. Um, and first and foremost, we are delighted to be offering this to three quarters of our students and beginning an intermediate French. And as of fall 2020, um, 561 students have been positively impacted financially by this project. Um, moving forward with this project has helped us provide no cost to low cost courses to all our students in French core classes, which for us is French 1001, 1002, 2001 and 2002. So 2002 is the one class that is not um, incorporated into this particular OER and our website that accompanies it. Um, while the scope of this project was a challenge, as Claire mentioned, um, is that same scope that enabled us to transition to no cost and low cost course offerings. Moreover, this scope allowed us to better utilize our learning management system. So both our and Francais Interactif's websites are now fully integrated into our LMS, um, which has enabled us to centrally house course content, clarify due dates, and streamline content delivery. This in turn has allowed us to respond to faculty questions and to teach more harmoniously as a group of French faculty, since we understand how 1001, 1002, 2001 um, are presented through the LMS, as well as the way that the homework works. Um, we have also allowed students to progressively build upon their skills through this multimedia website. So we combine it videos, recordings, and mechanical practice to help students develop their listening, reading, and writing skills. And we have created ancillary materials that are faithful to the content of the original OER they support. Um, and this way, we think this project complements and reinforces the excellent con content of Francais Interactif within the overarching objectives of the ALG mini grants. Um, the symbolic strength of this project is also something we think is quite valuable. Claire and I have worked in tandem for the past two years and feel that this project is a compelling example of the synergy and possibilities that result when collaboration is fostered and supportive. 
supported. And it's a reminder of the benefits of a strong partnership between faculty and keeping programs integrated across structural and in institutional divisions. Um, and last, we are proud of the technical skills we have gained through this project. We have definitely accrued a greater fluency with the Google framework. And in the era of social distancing, we have replaced paper polls with online surveys and have even designed first year seminars and upper level course projects where students build their own websites because of the knowledge we gained by doing this um, ancillary project, uh, these ancillary materials. I'd also like to um, go over some of the initial data that we have found. Um, as Claire mentioned earlier, when she was setting the context of UWG, French 1001 and 1002 do have um, high one th uh, DFW rates. Um, prior to implementing this project, as you can see from fall 2017 through fall 2018, we're just focusing on that window, window for these data. Um, we have a DFW rate of close to 40%, so very high. Um, uh, after implementing the OER and our homework project, we've seen a significant drop in the 1001 DFW rate, down to 26%. Of course, we'd like to continue to see that trend downward. We are very attentive and mindful of the need to keep um, you implementing strategies that help bring the DFW rate down. But again, these preliminary data are encouraging. What's Does also very, very con I'm sorry, was some, were you going to say something? No. Um, and then with our 1001 homework completion rate, um, this is something we are very proud of, quite frankly. Um, what you're looking at here in 1001, the homework completion rate of less than 25%. So this doesn't include completion rates that are still at D or F <laughs> levels. Um, that was at 17% in fall 2017 through fall 2018. However, that same completion rate of 25% or less upon implementing the new OER and our homework website has dropped to 4%. Um, so we're quite proud of this. We hope that it continues to trend down um, and we're gonna continue gathering data about completion rates. Um, for 1002, it's held pretty consistent too. Um, so that's, which isn't as much of a surprise because students at, once they move past 1001 are much more familiar um, with the structure in the class. Um, as Claire also mentioned, we are concerned with the crossover rate. Our crossover rate between 1001 and 1002 um, hasn't been as strong as we would like it to see. However, anecdotally, we feel um, and have observed that the crossover rate has continued to increase um, in a positive direction since implementing this OER and the homework website. So we're going to continue looking at that and um, accruing data that help us understand better the impact um, of this OER and our ancillary materials. Yes, thank you, Lisa. And, you know, it's it's really important for us to watch this data and see that, you know, our project is working with our students. It's very important to us that we are meeting student needs and helping our students to progress and succeed in our in our courses. Um, so let's take a look at what students are saying about our website. Um, so for this, um, we have some Quotes from students. Students say it gives me practice and makes me feel a little more confident in my things. And they also say I like that I'm able to see any answers that I got wrong and that I can correct them. I think being able to see what I missed, figuring out the right answer, and then being able to improve my grade is great. And so for us, these student quotes and these student kind of um, driven uh, data that we have here, it's really important to us because we have to remember this is homework after all. Students are saying positive things about homework, which is really important and exciting for us. Um, so we also see that when we average everything out, five out of seven students 
rank the price of our homework website as a five out of five because it's it's free and the cost of previous platforms has been discouraging but also deterring for students and so we are very excited to have this free homework site for them. Um, five out of seven students also indicate that the site provides effective practice and they rank the site as worth the time. And again, that may not seem like a big accomplishment, but again, we're talking about homework here. So students are saying their homework is worth the time, which is pretty significant to us. 71% of students say that they really do like our homework site in comparison to platforms that they previously used in language classes and that they agree and strongly agree that the platform has helped them on quizzes and exams. Um, so again, you know, the, one of the main goals of this project was getting students to really interact with the material, with the grammar and the vocabulary, not just fly through extra practice. It's a, a, a built scaffolded set of activities that are very purposeful and very, um, you know, they're made in a way so that students do have that interaction that hopefully will help them succeed in other areas of the class as well. And so 86% of our students agree or strongly agree that the platform has helped their overall class performance and their grade, as well as agreeing or strongly agreeing that the platform has helped their understanding of French. And so for us, um, we see the results and the impacts on our students through the grades, but it really does speak volumes that students feel positively about the homework side because, you know, Again, like I can't say it enough, it is homework. Students don't like homework. So the fact that they think that our site is useful and worth the time and if they like it, it does um, it does mean a lot to us. So we are very proud of our work and our contribution to the French language OER community. Um, plans to present this project at conferences and venues are something that we have and will continue to explore. Um, I actually was scheduled to present a poster presentation of the project at the USG Teaching and Learning Conference in April 2020, but due to the COVID-19 pandemic, um, the presentation was canceled. But we will continue to look for other venues where we can share our work and experiences in the hope that it may inspire others. And this process of creating the website has reshaped several aspects in our classrooms. So based on the positive effect um, on student learning, we took some of the themes and goals them into task-based assignments in our classes. And these assignments are a way to cement foundational skills by bridging the gap between things like theory and memorization and then application, something that really truly tests the understanding of the material. So task-based learning, um, it's based in a communicative approach centered around a real life scenario. So in these activities, students are placed into some sort of a situation and prompted to apply creatively what they've learned to specific learning outcomes. So in this way, task-based um, assignments can be a valuable tool in preparing for assessments and connecting what students learn in the classroom to the world outside of campus. So Lisa and I presented a workshop presentation, Demasking Task-Based Activities, um, a Practical Approach to Student Learning at the 2019 UWG Innovations in Pedagogy Conference. And we really credit this new curriculum structure and the overwhelmingly positive student outcomes to the knowledge and experience gained during this process of creating Français Interactif Devoir. So we do plan to continue to implement creative scaffolded activities in our classrooms, as well as with at-home practice through our website. We also look to gather more information from students to build a larger set of data on the overarching impact of our website in the lower levels of French courses. And always as language, culture, and pedagogy, as well as student needs um, are always changing, we will do revisions and updates um, as needed in the future. So we thank you very much for attending today and hope that you learned something or maybe um, feel inspired by our project. Um, if you have any questions or would like to learn more about the process or how to implement something like this into your classroom, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. Um, you can find our information on the screen here. So thank you very much. Yes, thank you so much. Thank you, this was wonderful. Um, do we have any questions uh, just kind of off the bat, bat that you would like to ask now? Um, feel free to put it in the chat or to just turn your mic on. Um, I see that we have someone new uh, who just joined. We did record the session, you so uh, you've missed um, 
the the bulk of the session, but we did record, so you'll be able to watch later if you'd like. Um, we've got Jeff typing a question in here. Um, so Jeff says, how did you work with students on typed accent marks in mm. Google Forms? <laughs> Seems like it would be tough. So I can take this one if you want me to, Lisa. Sure, sure. OK, mm. so um, one thing that you'll notice in the test me activity that we showed you. So, you know, in addition to reminding students that, you, you know, thing, little things like accents and punctuation and capitalization, they do count, they do matter. We actually put a list of all of the ac possible accented letters in French with all of the accents so that they could just copy and paste directly from that. Um, and also in our OER, we have a really fantastic few pages at the beginning that kind of teach students how to type accents in French um, because accents are part of spelling in French. So that is kind of part of our beginning in 1001 as well as something our OER provides for us. But, you know, it is something that we we didn't have that initial list of all of the different accents and that's something that we learned students were having a hard time saying how you know we're not used to having to figure out on the spot what we need and so that was something we learned through student feedback and added quite early on actually yeah and just to um thanks jeff for that question because it is a big issue right i mean students are not used to um not all not always used to dealing with accents they don't always understand the importance of accents as spelling or even completely changing the word in some cases in French. Um, and so the homework, and this is one of the um, ways that the precisions and limitations of the Google form can be very frustrating at first for students because hey, it's just an accent mark. Why is it wrong? But at the same time, it's like, well, it's an ac it's wrong because it's, it's your spelling. So just getting them used to details, um, it actually helps them be a little bit more mindful. And so in addition to the copy and paste feature in the website um, and to the great resources that the um, Francais Interactive textbook has, those shortcuts, Sometimes I even just tell students if it's easier for you, you can use um, also copy and paste on a Word document and go from there. It just depends on just giving as many options as possible for students to mitigate frustration. Um, so a follow up on that, you said the um, uh, you said you you w will encourage them to use um, like a word document copy and paste from there if they uh, if they feel like they need to um, do you ever provide them with a like a copy of the homework outside of Google Forms to help with that um, that's a great question and we the the homework is the standalone website um, and it's something that they can go back to at the end once they submit they can go back into and revise which is a new feature that um, Google actually had which has really encouraged students to go back and learn from their mistakes whereas before it was a one-off um, and so with that additional um, update to Google Forms we, you know, so we feel that um, having a paper, you know, having anything additional, we personally, I, we just weren't able to keep up with it and they can go back to it and revise as they move forward. So um, we kept it as a website. <laughs> okay, sure, that makes sense. Um, we have a raised hand. Um, Beth Malden, did you have a question you wanted to ask? Yes. Um, hi, this is Beth Malden, and I corresponded with you guys um, earlier this year. First of all, thank you so much for creating these activities. I mean, that is a tremendous amount of work, um, and it's been really beneficial for my students. And thank you. Oh, that's um, wonderful. <laughs> yes. Um, and my question is, and we kind of talked about this uh, when we were corresponding, but have I, it, my my only frustration is is that on my end I cannot see you know how my students are are doing and you know so f for me I just tell them it's it's you know self directed learning you know they they you know they can learn from their mistakes but I'm not sure you know exactly how they're doing and so I was wondering if you have thought about 
I, I don't even know how to phrase this question because I'm not a technical person, but, but you know, how would it be possible for people not at West Georgia to, to have access to that information, if that makes sense? It does, yes. Thank you so much for the question. You mm -hmm. actually are hitting on something that we have, we've worked a lot with this question. And mm -hmm. so the thing with this being an OER is that with the with the website that we provided as the OER, there's no way to record student answers because it would be in bulk and then FERPA. There's a lot of things that go into recording scores in an OER. Um, what we do, and this is something that we're trying to figure out how it could be a component, but so for our instructors, we have individual copies of the website, and from there we are able to link our individual forms to the Google Sheets. And this within itself has been a massive undertaking because we've been writing formulas and figuring out ways to get these, you know, just straight grades that come out of the form into a percentage grade and a sheet and a grade book style. So that's been a process within itself. Um, it's something that I really would like to figure out with the OER. Um, I would like so much to provide everyone with the ability to have this gradebook end. But mm -hmm. unfortunately, one of the limitations to the forms and the Google structure is that to make it so that there wasn't any you know, FERPA violation or crossover of student grades, mm -hmm. we would have to provide individual copies of the OER with all of the copies of the individual forms linked into the OER, which as mm -hmm. we mentioned was about 550 forms that go yeah. inside the website. We have to provide mm -hmm. that to each individual instructor at each individual institution. Wow. <laughs> so that, and that's one of the things that, you know, it's, it is a limitation that we we have talked about and you know I, I continue to research and see if there's a way to go about it because that is the one thing that I think is really missing from the OER that we provided and we you know we hope that students are using it as practice and you know we thought about the fact that students perhaps could take screenshots of their grades at the end and submit it to professors and professors could have the grade at the end but okay. Um, we are still working through that, but thank you so much for for asking that. And I yeah. wish I had a better answer for you. Um, we're still we're still trying to figure that one out. Okay, yeah, but I, I, again, I mean, it's a tremendous resource, and, and it took so much work. So thank you so much for for all of the work you put into that. So mm -hmm. thank you so much. Thank you. So I was just commenting um, uh, in the chat that I'm I'm wondering if there is a way for um, the site and forms to like download as a zip file that could then uh, be put in OpenALG for anyone to go and download from. And you could probably also like do a link on your website for that. But I'm not sure how, I'm not sure if they would download as a zip file. Like I don't know if the site and the forms will download. Mm. Um, and so that might be something worth looking at, see if it does download. And then when you upload it back into Google Drive, if it goes in correctly, you know, if it if it creates a copy that does what it's supposed to. Um, and then uh, Jeff was also saying that like a common Google form that everyone can save as a copy, um, but the site and like all the organization and stuff would be um that would be tough mm -hmm. right and we do have I mean, we have all of the common forms that built the site that are, that have made you know that have made the site that is the oer and so um if there is a way to release those you know we've we've thought about this as well there we could release them but then everyone that has access to download them would have editing access and so you're not guaranteed that the oer wouldn't shift with each person that is trying to get their form but might alter it some way mm -hmm. oh, and yeah, so also you know if we provide the forms then it would be up to each instructor using it to figure out a way to link it to a sheet or an excel document or whatever they want to do the grades from there mm -hmm. um, so unfortunately this is one aspect kind of the behind the scenes aspect mm -hmm. that is very complicated with this platform 
But to us, we thought about this from the very beginning and we said, okay, let's kind of do a, you know, let's weigh the options here. And, you know, it may be that we have to be a little bit creative about how we go about getting the grades in with this, just because it's so important to give students this free resource, because there were platforms and there were design um, structures that we could have used that had a grade sheet component. But again, you know, they weren't free. They weren't accessible to students everywhere. Um, you had a lot of ones that had small fees, but still fees attached. And we really wanted to get something that was no cost that students and instructors could use anytime, anywhere, in any way. And so, you know, it, it's one of those hard things that we 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 did think a lot about at the very beginning and then continue to talk about now because we're still continuing to work through this with our own classes. Yeah, we should um, we should we should work together and see if there's something we could figure out for sure, though. Um, I'm sure there's a way to make it happen. I yeah, just don't know off the top of my head. Because <laughs> it's wonderful, Beth, that you're using this um, in your classes. We love that. And it would be um, such a shame that, um, you know, this resource couldn't get um, more traffic because of the very, very important point you're raising about how do you track student progress? How do you incentivize by attaching a grade? Um, so I think, yeah, it's 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 definitely um any anything, and I love all these um, sort of brain um, storming, troubleshooting possibilities here on, that are coming up in the chat. Um, anything that could be a little bit um, more formalized and shareable would be absolutely wonderful. Have Have you thought about getting in touch with the Francais Interactive uh, team at the University of Texas and just see if there's some way they could coordinate with you guys or? Um, because I'm sure, th I mean, so many people are adapting their materials and that's one of the, the big um, downsides is the, the, the lack of homework activities um, with the, the text. And so I, I feel like they would welcome uh, what you have built um, and maybe that they could help put together, use their resources to put together some kind of platform. I don't know. Yeah, we... We have um, we've reached out to them a couple times to kind of give them the, the progress of, um, uh. of our, our site and mm -hmm. we haven't um, asked them specifically for that. But that's a fantastic idea, mm -hmm. you know, because we we would love to, like Lisa said, we'd love to make sure that everyone had this um, in some possible way, you know, and mm -hmm. that's a fantastic idea. So thank you for that, Beth. Yeah. And by the way, I, I popped in late and I apologize if I'm asking questions that you've already gone over before. So, um, but anyway. We are glad that you could join us even, um, even, even late. <laughs> um, but we, we did record. So if you do um, want to go back and watch the recording, um, get the rest of it, it'll be up on the site probably um, either Monday afternoon or Tuesday um, okay. of next week. I'll have to get it captioned first, but it'll be up there. Um, Great. We have, we have Jeff typing right now too. Um, hmm. Okay. Jeff says, I wonder if this is a question for Delmar Larson over at LibreText. He's looking at various homework solutions, but not for French yet. Mm -hmm. So that could be worth looking into as well. Yes, thank you. Definitely. Do we have any other questions? I'm sure you guys will get a couple of emails um, after the recording goes out. Like I said, we did get um, we did have some interest in watching the recording um, next week. So I uh, I'm sure you'll hear from some people to uh, learn a little bit more about how you did this homework platform. I know that um, doing the foreign language homework platforms and like mathematics homework platforms and the ones where 
these te- these platforms where you would normal where students would normally have to buy an expensive package um, just to do their homework. Um, these are really important products um, to come out of these OER initiatives. So um, it's really awesome to see. But thank you. We really appreciate uh, the chance again to share, as well as the support um, that ALG gave us in the form of a mini grant. So that was, you know, it's, uh, I mean, quite frankly, it probably, we probably wouldn't have done it without sort of the um, mini grant opportunity, you know, that we just, it's, so we really do appreciate <laughs> the support um, for the project and the continued interest um, that you've shown um, throughout. So thank you so much. Mm. Yeah, yeah, thank, thank you, you so for doing this. Um, and yeah, I mean, yeah, just thank you for doing this. Thanks for doing the project. Thanks for doing this presentation. Um, we look forward to seeing awesome stuff. <laughs> and honestly, your results are really awesome. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the homework was, I mean, we didn't look at it um, prior to preparing for this. I mean, we knew because we saw homework grades were, you know, increasing, but we didn't actually compare. Um, and so seeing that 4% was such a welcome surprise, a wonderful surprise. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, well, if we don't have any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and stop recording now.